I was originally planning to do a video about the new pseudo strider that we got that worked a little bit differently in Gear Chronicle. But then this morning we got the reveal of Melon and her whole entourage, so I wanted to do a video about that. But then Bushiro decided to throw another curveball at us and decided to reveal a brand new trigger type. And thus we arrive at this video. Hey Carvados, as you might have noticed, there was a lot of new information that we got concerning the next stage booster set in the past couple of hours or days, depending on when you're watching this and in what time zone you're living. But a lot is happening right now, meaning there's a lot of content to go over. But in this video, I want to address the big one in the room here. And that's the fact that we get a brand new trigger type starting from the Next Age booster set. So basically what the reveal to us is this. A 30k shield crit trigger that has the Sentinel keyword. And we got them for all the free clans in the next stage booster set. So we got the one for Royal Paladin, which is Bringer of Dreams Badness. We got the one for Gear Chronicle, that's Hard Thumb Worker. And we got the one for Neo Nectar, that is Flower Garden Mater Milus. And this is gonna be a big thing as it allows players to do a lot of interesting things with deck building. Because the big thing here is, this is the fourth crit trigger for Royals, Neos and Gear Chronicle. Which of course allows them to play something in the vein of 16 crit builds. But that's not the big thing here. The big thing here is that we got a bigger shield unit, but at the same time it holds the sentinel tag. Because now players have more options in deciding what type of sentinel cards they want to have in their deck. As we of course got the perfect cards, and in those respects we've got the draw PGs, and we got the great one PGs. But now we got a brand new type of Sentinel, which is just in this case a 30k shield, which is an upgrade of the 15k shields of the normal crit trigger themselves. And this is somewhat reminiscent of a precursor of different Sentinel cards, as way back in the old era, we got something that was called Quint at the Wall. And instead of discarding a card to guard against an attack, you could counter bless one and you called the top five cards to the Guardian Circle from your deck, so they could guard for you that way. But this is a different approach as it's just a higher shield value on its own. And on first glance this might not look as much as you could say how is this going to help you guard against a high powered attacks as it's not a perfect guard. So against a significant high number of attacks something like a Uranus you're not going to guard as efficiently. But it doesn't mean that this card in particular isn't all that useful as Depending on what type of environment you are or what type of decks are meta relevant or not, this could actually be a much better fit than a perfect guard in its own regard. Because a perfect guard in itself costs you always two cards from hand to guard against an attack. So this could be an effective way to guard against attacks which are like 70k guard or something where you need to waste a significant amount of cards from hand to guard against it. So discarding two cards is always a better trade-off because if the highest shield value you could throw away with that is 40k with two heal triggers. So something that costs at least 45k shield is a good perfect guard uh, target. But something that only costs 20k shield or something that only costs 15k shield or 5k shield, if you're forced to perfect guard against that, then that's not a good trade-off. This type of sentinel is much better equipped off to guard against those type of attacks. And... Something that really comes to mind in this is of course Axel. This is a great central type to combat Axel strategies or Axel decks. And it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly Axel decks, but also maybe force of protect clans that function like an Axel deck that are multi-tacking, but not with significant high numbers in their attacks themselves. And also within the mid-range of force clans, this is actually a good defense option as 30k shield in its own can guard a lot of significant numbers Numbers, as if you put this on a force clan uh, grade 3, which in this case are all the clans that are going to get them, you're going to guard with one card effectively to 43k. So every attack that's 42 or lower is guarded with one single card from hand. And a lot of clans don't actually go over that threshold all that easily, only specific clans that are tailored towards hitting high effective numbers. So with that you can actually guard very effectively against a lot of attacks. And even most vanguards themselves 
hit around maybe 23 to 35. So with one single card, you can either already two to pass them or want to pass them without actually wasting another card. And you can say, well, what if the attack is 43 or 53? Then a perfect guard immediately is better. Not necessarily. A perfect guard in, its, in itself always costs two cards from hand. So you should count the discard shield value on top of this shield value to get a better understanding of what actually type of shield value you're wasting on the normal perfect guard itself. And in some cases, this is actually way more that you should waste. So if you discard a trigger with it and something like a crit trigger or, uh, or a heal trigger, that stacks up quite a lot. But if you discard a grade three, of course, then it's a whole different story. But depending on which clan you're using or which deck, this is a good fit or not. But that's only in the current sense what, what we know right now with the next stage or the tri free clans themselves. As for now, we can only assume that Neo Nectar, Gear Chronicle and Royal Palin is going to get them. But with that said, it's not that unlikely that every set afterwards are going to attain this type of critical trigger as well. And with the whole notion that we're assuming that the next sets are all G era focus, this type of crit trigger is embodying or even confirming this even more as all these crits for anybody that's playing has played in a G era, these are the persona crits for their respective G era archetype. And with the Stride Fathers also being reintroduced with Steam Breath Dragon, Brunwyn, and all those other cards, it's looking to be even more confirmed that the other sets after this are gonna be G era focused, which in itself will confirm that those clans will also get these type of critical triggers. And then it's a different story because for protect decks, these are actually a very good addition because in force you can, can make the argument, well, we still need our normal perfect guards to guard against some insanely hot powerful attacks or not. And that is true, as sometimes in, a, in let's say, something for a uh, more Dread Phantom build, the, those Blessed Darks that swing in can swing in for like 60k very rapidly. So then this shield might not be enough. But for Protect decks, they have Protect 1 as a marker, which in itself is already a perfect guard. So running even more normal perfect guards in their main deck doesn't really make a lot of sense. So what they now can do is just run the extra crits, which they usually want to do, and they can actually get more shield value or at least more effective shield value out of it, which also happened to lead to combat their biggest weakness, which is Axel. So in the basic sense, this opens up way more deck building design as it allows players to play with a lot more interesting to decisions in what type of strategy you want to work with, with what type of trigger lineup, do they want to run the draw PG or the crit P the sentinels, or now they can also experiment with what type of sentinel do I actually want to play? And then they can start going from there. As we now have way more options in deck building, which opens up a lot of interesting things as some strategies are going to benefit from this critical trigger a lot more than if we didn't get them. So this is a very interesting new addition to the Vanguard lineup as this will revolutionize in some aspect of how Vanguard is going to be played as this is a very interesting extra defense option that we've never really seen in this shape. But there is an important thing that you need to keep in mind. Sentinel guard restrict effects will still block out this critical trigger as it is a Sentinel. So you need to keep that in mind that something like Waterfall or Danger Lunge Dragon will block this thing as well. Because it's still a Sentinel even though it's a crit trigger. So it's the same as the draw PG. So be wary of that fact. But at the same time, it does interact with certain guard, guard restrict skills as something like the Battledore effect. This is actually better equipped against a Battledore guard restrict than something like a normal perfect guard as that forces you to waste even more cards from hand. So depending on what type of mana you're in and what type of decks are played or what type of tech cards are played, this could be a very good fit for your build or this is just an, a double R that you don't have to fetch. But what we've seen from the past with other double R's and triple R's for their respective deck that are very generic and tend to be very useful in the long run, these could get really pricey. So. Get your hands on them while you can. But that's basically everything I want to talk about concerning these new type of Sentinel cards. But the interesting thing here now is, is that we only see them for try free. And that's obvious because this is set where they're going to be introduced. But all of them are force clans. So 
are we going to get them for every single clan afterwards with the new support for the possibly the Jira support or are we going to see different types for different types of gift markers maybe excel decks aren't going to get this in a crit form but as a front and maybe protect is going to get them as another type of draw instead of a crit or maybe protect gets a whole different version maybe with even higher shield we don't know it's an interesting thing to talk about and it's an interesting to this interesting thing to discuss as this opens up a lot of interesting things and a lot of interesting discussions around sentinels specific type of crit triggers new limiting restriction cards and all this kind of jazz and this and this means we have a lot of interesting fuel to discuss for the next coming weeks which we're going to tackle on this channel as just the introduction of this type of cards opens up pandora's box basically but in my opinion the positive type of pandora's box so with that said let me know in the comments down below all your thoughts and opinions about this new type of sentinel or this new type of critical trigger as there are a lot of interesting things that comes with the release of this card as always this video has been brought to you by our lovely patrons over patreon.com slash vanguard insider if you want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel then head over to patreon.com slash vanguard insider and become a patron today but with that said I'm Mr. Timely, and I'll see you guys in the next one!